we were playing uh, here at IPFW, Oakland was one of the first wins that we got. So uh, it was an exciting time then. Hopefully the Dons can pull it off this year. It'll be a winnable game. And not only that, the, the fact that uh, they need to get these home games, but this is one of the higher echelon teams. So if you can notch one, you notch one of a little bit more impression. But more importantly, you're building up the win so you can get that seed better for the tournament. And that's the biggest thing you got to worry about right now. Absolutely. I think that's what the city of Fort Wayne has been talking about. I think that's what we've been talking about, getting that seeding, get an opportunity to play in a tournament. I think it'd be good for the Dons to pull this one out. All right, you, you know, got a situation here where they've got to play it hard. They've got to box out. These guys like to go on the boards and work it hard. Well, you got to go hard on offensive boards. You got to go hard on the defensive boards. And we talked about this last game. Really, our basket is the one we defend, not the one we shoot at. So hopefully we can get rebounds on both ends of the floor. Be a lot of big keys in this one. The point guard situation for IPFW being the best of them with Michi Johnson still possibly out of this one today. So basketball coming up. We'll be right back. Hard. I go to class and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd because cancer doesn't play by the rules. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. And we welcome you to the Memorial Coliseum. Dean Pantazzi, Keon Henderson here to give you the action of the IPFW Mastodons and the Oakland Grizzlies. Teams being introduced out here right now as we speak. Nice crowd and a huge crowd brought in here by Oakland. Keon, uh, they may make as much noise here as the IPFW Don's crowd, so the, the Hope folks got to make some more noise. Well, I tell you what, one thing I noticed earlier, it seems like uh, with the uh, excitement of Oakland, it kind of pushed IPFW fans to get a little bit louder than normal. Well, the proximity is close. I mean, it's not that big a drive. They can get down here. Uh, haven't had any snow yet. And on a day when it's going to be probably single-digit temperatures, you don't want to do too much outside, so this is a good thing to get inside. Good place to be, good place to see some good basketball. I think we'll have a good uh, show here today. Don's taking on one of the higher higher teams. Here are the starting lineups. Uh, first for the Grizzlies, they'll start Derek Nelson at a forward. Derek Nelson averaging 18.4 a game. He is a 6'5 junior. Jonathan Jones, a sophomore, 5'11". He is averaging 15 points a game. He will be one of the guards. Tim Williams, another one of the guards as well. He is 6'2", 200 pounds, and uh, averaging about six points a game. Patrick McCloskey will be at one of the forwards. That averaging a lot of points, but uh, apparently a very good worker in the post. And the center will be Dan Waterstead. He is 6'10", and probably is going to be one of the bigger post people they're going to see, they being the Dons all year. Greg Campy in his 24th season, pushing the 400 win mark. So obviously he's done some things right, Keon. Yeah, 400 wins is a big, it's a big deal, and uh, hopefully we won't give him uh, another one tonight. Dons will start DeWitt Scott at one of the forwards. Uh, DeWitt Scott uh, doing good work in the outside of recent games. That Blockmeyer will get the point guard spot. It's Demetrius Johnson still not ready to come. He is dressed, probably not going to play. Ben Botts will be the other guard, and then the other three guards will be David Carson, Jerron Burroughs, playing the listed at a forward, but he's a pivot man, Keon. He's a guy key in the middle. Yeah, he's a swing guy. He can do it all. And there is Dane Fife in his third season with the Dons. 27 up, 46 down. Would like to get number 28 today. Get more confidence. Get another important Summit League win. And this team needs to beat a good team. This is one of the biggest things I think they need to take out of this game today. And I believe we can do it. Uh, it was the same thing Coach Doug No told us when we played, you know, from 99 to 04. This was one of those games that we could win. We actually did well here and then did, did well up in Oakland. We had an opportunity to go up and play. They have a nice facility. Um, Don's going to pull this one out. I got a good feeling for it. 
Well, I, you know, the, the, one of the big things I think has to happen now is the development of the yards. And the young man, number 12, Zed Plockemeyer, coming off the, on the bench right now as the Don start to take the court. He is such a key today. Uh, he had a struggle against Centenary, and Chris Perkins had to come in and kind of bail them out of the point guard position. That development needs to continue today, or the Dons are going to have a long day. You know, one thing I learned, I was watching TNT, listening to Charles Barkley and Kenny the Jet Smith talking, and they were talking about how that point guard is an important position, but uh, it's got to come from some other places. Well, here's the tip, and it is controlled by Oakland. With the basketball is Jonathan Jones out top. He has Ben Boss on him. He'll come to the right side, come inside, and kick back out. And they're going to try and reset to Derek Nelson. Jones comes back between the rings, back to the right side on a give and go. Williams, that's Tim Williams. They're a little, a little bit of a spin right now, all of the Globetrotters on the top. And they're really working a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, we have one of the assistant coaches yelling out the, <laughs> the shots clock to them. Shot is no good, and here is Plackmeyer coming up with the ball. Having played against Oakland, Dean, one of the most difficult things about playing this team is they run an unorthodox offense, and you'll right. see a lot Plackmeyer of that. with the shot. Got it for three. Well, that's a good start. He wanted to have a good one. He's He's got a good start there. Let's see if he can do the whole package today. It would be so important for the Dons. Derek Nelson on the right side. This is Patrick McCloskey. They go into the low post. Turning around is Waterstead. Rims around no good. McCloskey the rebound. They'll reset. Now McCloskey into the lane. Outside and they'll go into their weave. They are very meticulous. Very methodical. One of Coach Fife's big points before the game was block out, block out, block out. We've got to make sure we're getting those rebounds. Well, because they don't want too many opportunities. The feed inside is the Waterstead. It is no good. And there is Keno with the rebound. Plockmeyer brings it up. Don's on the attack. He'll swing it over here to Botts. Out top, Burroughs, he's going to try a three. He's going to hit it. Hey, I'll take those any day, Dean. I'll take this start any day. <laughs> Six nothing. Oakland will pass that ball. They don't care if they shoot the ball with three seconds left. They're methodical. They're going to get what they want. Well, I'll tell you what. They're going to have to come out of that if the Dons keep hitting these shots. Yeah. Jones, works back outside. This is Williams, Tim Williams, a... 6-2 freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan. He'll work it to the right. Ten, nine, eight, and Derek seven, Nelson will come up. Six, Derek five, Nelson will fake. Four. With a shot up. Jones on his way. We have a travel. Hey. This guy's getting really irritating. I tell you, we got a coach no less than two <laughs> feet away. Is if he's going to count. Right. And he's only a foot away yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah. And if he's going to count every time the clock has 10, we'll hear him all night. But that's good because we want them to rush those shots, don't we? Yeah. But I still love to put a muzzle in him. <laughs> There's Blockmeyer. Two good possessions for the Dons right out of the shoot. Boy, I'll tell you what, we waited for good possessions a long time against Centenary. Botts, cut off. Scott, Blockmeyer 4 3. That one's off, but hey. put it in good. That's Don. the way you come back in as Carson was the nice rebound, and the Dons are out to an 8 0 start. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a great, it's a great thing, but if they don't have the patience and hit the shots, it all goes down the tubes. And they know that. Shot is up, no good, but he was bounced around pretty good was Tim Williams. And we have bodies on the floor, but apparently everybody's okay. As Carson is helped up after Scott was helped up. And Carson kind of took a shot to the ribs as the guy, uh, Williams, for uh, Oakland. They got, they got Scott with the foul, first of the game. And Tim Williams goes to the line where he is a 59% free throw shooter. Less than that now. Well, when you do a little better up, one up and one down, it's not real good. Yeah. The guy, guy posts about 70%, isn't it? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, if you're not doing that, you're not doing the job. Missed them both, but they get the rebound. And he has the shot. Right inside it goes to Keith Benson who comes in. And he can't get it to fall. And here's Blockmeyer as the Dons come on the attack one more time. Three possessions, three scores. Let's see what happens here. Botts, runner in the lane, run around, no good. Tip up, no good. Rebound Carson, gets it loose in the lane, and we have a foul. I think the Dons got the picture Coach Fife wanted about going for the boards. Well, doing it in the first two minutes is one thing, or three minutes is one thing. Do it the next 37, and let's see what happens. The problem has been with this team, Keanu, and you know it as well as I do, is sustaining that kind of effort. They've had great starts before. Sometimes they run into the lulls. If they can continue this up, this will be great. Plockmeyer with the inbound. Guarded very, very tightly. 
needs help. Still needs help. Burroughs comes out to save him. Kino makes the move outside, gives it off to Bot. Stop and go. Back outside Burroughs. Here is Scott for three. Back of the rim, no good. Rebound Carson, but he lost it on the control. And here comes Oakland with Jonathan Jones. That's Derek Nelson on the left side. He'll cut into the lane. And he thought he traveled, but they're going to rule a foul. And they got, uh, did they get Scott again? That's two quick ones. See if coach will allow him to continue to play. I'll tell you what, you don't want to wait this too long. Inbounds comes to Jonathan Jones. And what do we have? We have another turnover, and we have a, 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 a foul? What they call here? Look like there's an, yeah, offensive, an offensive foul. foul a block. Yeah. Look like the whip's going to come out, too. We got McCloskey, and here comes Perkins in, and uh, who's coming out? Scott. Probably a good move. Yeah. I mean, if that was about, uh, you know, if you got eight minutes left, Maybe so, but you've got too much time to give him a third foul in the first well, I'll half. tell you what, Chris Perkins fills a lot of roles for this team right now. Yes, he does. He's coming in at the small forward of this position, and he's also probably the best backup guard they've got off the bench. Here's Plockmeyer. Guarded very tightly, almost tied up. Hands to Burroughs. Gives it to Perkins. Stutter steps a little bit, spins in the lane, loses it on the floor. Battle for the ball. We'll have a jump, and whose possession? Belongs to the Dons. 8-0. Very good start out of the shoot for the Dons, who have hit three of six and two of four back of the arc, and have only allowed Oakland to take three shots because Oakland has committed uh, a bunch of turnovers already. They have three. Blockmeyer guarded and double teamed. Going to be tied up, and they had to call a timeout. He's having a little problem with the indecision there, Keon. And we have a 30-second timeout to try and make sure, sure things work. The young point guard, again, being uh, done in by his inexperience. The deeper you get in the corner, uh, the more apt you are to turn the ball over because the baseline and sometimes the sideline plays as a defender. So yeah, you, you know where to go. Ball, yeah, you want to keep the ball above the free throw line. Well, you also want to you know, stay from the sideline. You want to stay out of the corner. Yeah. And you want to stay out of the corner and the sideline up near, near center court because you're in no man's land. And if they get two guys over you, I don't care who you are, you're not going to get it around them. Yeah. The best thing to do in that situation, though, Dean, is uh, if you can, and I, and I know it's easier said than done, sometimes you've got to stay low and step through those two guys and see if you can get a bounce pass to somebody. Well, and sometimes you might get a call and a foul. Yeah. Because uh, those guys can't be standing still and being effective defenders. They'll be moving. If they're moving and you get the contact, I think 99% of the time you're going to get the foul yeah. called against them. That's right. So out of that 30-second timeout to compose themselves, mostly for Plackmeyer's aid, and Zach will trigger it in. Get it into Carson. Almost lost control. Pushes his man out, moves into the lane. Nice move. Had some spot. It was a shot clock violation anyway. And here in the, come the forecourt comes Jones. Puts up a long runner and hits their first bucket of the game. 8-2 as Oakland is on the board finally after four and a half minutes. Burroughs. Botts. Finally gets away from his man. Has an opening. Gets it to Burroughs. Gets inside Carson. He wants to post, take his dog down low. Thinks he can do it. Works on him. Works him down. Works him down. Puts it up. Gets it no good. He's still having like no luck on that rim. Into the forecourt comes Jones as Oakland comes on the attack. Oh, Jones comes around and lays it in. Tough shot. Tough shot. Nice slice. And they have cut the deficit from 8-0 to 8-4 to over the last two possessions. Lockmire to Burroughs. Perkins on the right side. Gets the screen, doesn't use it. Gets back outside Burroughs. He wants to take the three. Decides not to. Botts takes it. Gets a little bit of a moving screen. Now Botts drives the baseline. Goes back outside Plockmeyer. Inside low to Burroughs, who goes to work. Puts it up. Doesn't get it up there. And what do we have? Foul called. Or did they call a timeout? Okay, are we, are we going with our official break? It looks like we are, so we'll be right back. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, cruelty to animals. 
Emmy was a victim of cruelty and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick or fly or cool or none of that. It's just cruel. If you don't have any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Let's take a minute to thank today's game sponsor, 860 Pint and Slice, located at 860 South Carolina Street, Four Way for Pine Pizza and Drinks. It's 816 Pint and Slice. Don's up 8 4, 14 50 to go here in the first half. They got out to an 8 0 start. Jakari Johnson about ready to check back in for the first time in this game. Carson goes to the free throw line. Oakland bench not totally sure that he should be there. <laughs> We couldn't tell because they were screening us. Shot is good by Carson, and he's on the board. The Dons are up 9-4. I think this might be one of those games where these guys spend a lot of time standing in front of us, and we'll be counting on the monitors quite a bit today, Keon. Carson's second one is good as the first, and the Dons break double figures. And they're on the board with their first two free throws. And up six. Cici is one of the guys that has checked into the game now, number 12. Hands to Jones. Back to Cassisi. Guarded there by Potts. Puts an elbow into Potts. Try to clear himself some space. Gets back outside to Jones. Cassisi wants it back. Wants to go into one of the big guys. That is Will Hudson. He'll hook it up way short, and he traveled. I think we've seen the evidence that I don't know uh, if they've shot more than two times with the shot clock above 10. I don't think they have. And the two shots they got was when they actually pushed the issue. In transition. Perkins now working the point as he's moved there with Plockmeyer coming out and Jakari Johnson moving into the other three guard spot. And Jakari has the shot, doesn't use a pop from Burroughs, hands a pop to Burroughs, a sloppy pass. And they threw it away and Cassisi took it away. He almost went backcourt on that sucker. Hands it outside to the new man coming in, Eric Kangas, and Kangas hits a three ball. And all of a sudden, it's a little bit closer than it uh, was out of the start. Oakland back within three. They haven't been that close since the start of the game. Jakari kicks way outside, a little sloppy pass again, but Perkins tries off the glass and gets it. Beautiful shot. Dons can't be throwing those kind of passes all game, Ken. They're going to get themselves in trouble. Yeah, that's like throwing that Hail Mary. Here's Jones, and they're going to set into their offense again. Long shot by Kangas, way off to the side. Rebound on the floor. And back outside, Kangas will get it to Johnson, who drives on Botts, has a shot advantage, puts it up, no good. Rebound on the floor, taken out of there by Jakari Johnson, up to Chris Perkins. He's on the run, pulls up from 15, rims around, no good. But, uh, nice stop by Carson, he'll go up, no good. Works for it again, and oh, they, got, they get him for the pile? Looks like they did. But you know, yeah. if I'm Coach Fife, I'm not, I'm not disappointed with that shot by Perkins in transition. That's a nice no. pull-up. And, and it was a tough luck shot. Yeah. I really like the effort by Carson yeah. because he went and got it once and one actually had a good chance to get it twice before they called the foul. So Oakland up down 12-7 with the basketball. 13 minutes to go in the first half. Greg can't be walking in front of us, shouting out some instructions, now sitting back down for a while. Well, we have probably have about 15 seconds before our boy starts uh, yelling again. There's a shot up, no good. And we're talking about the shot clock, the shot clock monitor. That sits off to our left. This may be the first game in uh, NCAA history with three shot clocks, one human, two digital. I prefer the two digital ones. They don't take my hearing out. Okay, the inbounds pass to Jones. He'll work it into the lane, Nelson. Scoops it around, gets it up and in. That's a nice move, and he had to get it over a couple of bigger guys. Good strong guy. Good, good move. And they are back within three as Nelson gets his first two. Here's Botts. Feeds inside of the Carson. Back outside Perkins to Burroughs low. Guarded there by Lowell. Now Perkins, or er, Burroughs, Burroughs gets a nice shot in the lane. Dean, do you sense a great uh, defensive intensity on both sides of the ball today? Well, yeah. Uh, the Dons are picking up right where they left off last time we saw them. Unfortunately, apparently they did not do this in a couple of other games that we've not seen, and uh, this is something that they need to have be more consistent with. Jones, outside left, now to Kangas, guarded there by Jakari. Jakari gets around Jakari, scoops it underneath, and a little dunk down there by Lawal. 
14-11. Jakari with another bad pass. It's Jones with the ball, and he'll take it down and dunk it. The Dons are really getting sloppy on the offensive end. This has got to be driving Dane crazy. Lazy passes. Oakland's another got, one. Oakland's got a pretty good uh, defensive intensity right now. Oh, they, I'll tell you what. The Dons are playing right into their hands, though. Yeah. This isn't anything they're doing defensively, Keon. This is sloppy play on the offensive end. Can we have a hold? And I believe we have our media timeout. 14-13. Don's uh, repaired to the bench to try and fix things that have gone totally awry here in the last two minutes. We'll be right back. to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd because cancer doesn't play by the rules. That book was all right. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Here's a little bit of an indication of what's gone wrong in the last couple of plays. Don's getting a little careless with the basketball, and this time Jonathan Jones made him pay for it big time. You had a theory on this besides the fact that uh, my thoughts that the Don's are a little sloppy with the basketball. Well, I think there's a, a, a little bit of a ball pressure out top, but I think you're right. Uh, Don's have just got to kind of tighten up some loose ends. Oakland with the basketball under their own basket. Jones to trigger. Gets way outside to Nelson. He'll hand to Cassisi, and Kangas now has it between the rings. Come to the left side, Jones. Jones had an opening, but did not take it. Here's Kangas, 4-3, way short. On the floor, Jakari Johnson with the rebound. Johnson into the forecourt, up right side to Burroughs. Botts. Had Burroughs, didn't see him. Johnson goes into Burroughs now. Let's see if he works his man. They try to cheat a little bit to him, comes into the lane. Dicks underneath. Out to Perkins. He'll try the triple. Got it. Perkins looks like he's feeling good today. He's sticking that tongue out every time he shoots the ball. Well, I tell you what, I think he almost senses that there is a need for him to play well, and he has stepped up his game. Kangas. To Cassisi. Back to Kangas on the give and go. That's pretty play. And the Don just got caught. I mean, that's right good, good execution. Came right off the screen. Simple basketball move. Cut to the o basket. Oakland back within two. At 17-15, approaching the halfway point of the first half. All right, there was a short pass, and that almost got away. <laughs> got to put some space between us and the defender. Oh, yeah, oh, by the way, those guys in the black, they are not who we're trying to throw it to. Right. Here's Botts, and he's fouled outside. And his counterpart, number 12, Cassisi, is the one that will get the foul. And it will put the Dons out of bounds, as that is only the fourth team foul on Oakland in the first half. Each team has 14 fouls. That part of the game has been pretty clean. Carson to inbound, gives it to Botts, goes into the lane, stripped to the ball, and the Dons turn it over for the fifth time. And here is a shot up and no good by Nelson. Ball on the floor, and it'll be long to Oakland. Well, I tell you what, we had really good three or four minutes out of the start, and ever since then, uh, done a little uh, little reversal I guess I mean I'm encouraged by the fact that we're still up to even though we were up eight. yeah and that's mostly because the fact they're not hitting shots but re recently they've started to hit those yeah. and mostly when they haven't tried to milk the entire shot clock let's see if we'll get to our human shot clock here in about 12 seconds and we probably will Kangas gets it out to Lowell Beck Jones He'll drive, kick back outside. Here's Cassisi with a long bomb that's back of the rim, no good. Easy rebound and a stuff down through and a nice offensive work in there by Lawal. 
Not boxing out either all of a sudden the last few times. Box out, box out, box out. Well, got to keep this one close because there are things to repair at halftime. Going outside. And Carson inside will hit the shot and get the Dons back in front at 19 to 17. He's got six. In fact, he's the Don's leader in the scoring department right now. Kangas. Blockmeyer on him. Now Botts will go against Cassisi. Gets a cutting inside to Nelson. And Nelson just got away nicely from Carson. Just lost him. The offense that Oakland has, you can see it just as clear as day. They always have somebody coming opposite of the ball off a screen right around the free throw line. And that person is just getting right to the basket. Somebody's got to step up. You know, the good thing is that this is happening before the halftime. And there are things that can be fixed. Here's a give inside to Carson. Nice move. No good. No reward. Grab it out of there by Lowell. And he'll move it ahead to Jones. And they're moving it quickly into the forecourt this time. Langus is open for three. Kangas will hit it. So that's when Burris has to be greedy. Yep. And I believe Dane Fife wants to have a timeout. And he is indicating that's a 30-second timeout. And that is... So uh, you've got a situation here where the Dons have just uh, had themselves a little bit of problem there. For tickets to IPFW Athletic Events, you can call 260-481-6000 or go to the IPFW Athletics website at GoMastodons.com. Basketball tickets also available at the Coliseum box office. Discount package is also available in family four-packs, four-season senior citizen Saturdays, and you can bring your group to the hoop packages as well. So lots of ways to see Mastodon basketball. Hopefully better than it has been played over here in the last three and a half minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, those fans from Oakland really enjoying the last few minutes of the basketball game. Why not? Their team is playing very well. Yeah. Uh, maybe they took a little time to get used to the building or get their legs under them or whatever, but in the last three or four minutes, uh, this game has done a 180 from what it started. And the Dons need to fix things. They're down three. This is the first deficit they've had all day because they got out to an eight nothing start. Botts feeds inside and there's another pass thrown away. Here's Cassisi. Outside Jones. Inside now Nelson. He'll work on his man. Put a shot up. Put it in. Boy, they sure have found the hole. I tell you, it's going in. Seems like every time now. Yes, it is. Blackmire does not have a man open. Hands out to Burroughs. Downs now by five. Down by five. They started with an 8-0 lead. Here's Perkins trying to skip through. The ball is batted away from him. Turnovers are really piling up at an alarming rate now for the Downs. Jones into the lane. Scoops up. No good. And they're going to rule a foul. Or offensive foul? Offensive foul. Burroughs took a charge. Well, that's a good call. And we'll have our immediate timeout with 7.50 to go here in the first half. IPFW up eight, one point, now down five. We'll be back. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Grizzlies key is to win coming in today. We're pressured the Don's guards and uh, actually have done a very good job at that because the turnovers have come a lot there. Make their bigs work. Them being IPFW and pressure up and down the court. And another thing you can add to that is run our offense the way it's supposed to be, and they're doing it exactly the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah, I think you said something key in a break. Uh, the Dons have let up and the Grizzlies have woke up. And don't get a bear that to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Carson almost has it killed, stolen away. Perkins, and they're really getting the good defense going now. Here's Carson trying a triple. Way short, almost an air ball. And batted out of bounds. It'll belong. Oh, they're going to rule that off the Dons. I don't know about that. Dude. Neither do I. We don't, have the greatest, we don't have the greatest look. Yeah. but Maybe it's those coaches that are screening us. 
She did it on purpose. <laughs> so here's Kangas. Cassisi. Cassisi trying to beat Plackmeyer off the dribble. Hands back to Kangas. Who step on through. May have taken a few more steps than necessary, but it's allowed, and that's a bucket. I counted four. I was going to give him three. <laughs> You're allowed, what, one and a half? Yeah. Either way, that wouldn't work. Plackmeyer goes back outside. Jakari Johnson, boy, this defense is really tough now. Perkins, tough shot. Short. Don's has now stopped hitting shots, and that's mostly because they're being pressured like you can't believe. Yeah. Here's Nelson. Cassisi. Kangas. And now they'll be patient. They're changing it up. This is a good way of doing things. Don't give them anything, any kind of pattern to fall into. And the first three or four possessions, they were in those patterns. Now the players are in. I believe we're going to get a demi who's coming into the game on a foul. Oh, you got a Plackmire. It looked like a demi to me, didn't it? It looked like yeah, a demi to you. That's what I thought it was. And he will pick up uh, his first. Bot set to come back into the game. And McCloskey, senior 6'8 forward, switches the first one. And Botts will come in for Plackmeyer, which will probably swing Perkins over to the point. I was wondering how much longer Coach was going to let uh, DeWitt sit. I think he's trying to get him in. He doesn't want things to get too out of control. See if DeWitt can come in and give us a spark. Well, I think, and I think he only had Burroughs out of there just to get a glass of water and come back out. Because Demi was in there before you could even say quick, he was out. <laughs> McCloskey with number two. That's and he's got it. That shot doesn't look good, but it goes in. That's all counts. McCloskey's first two of the game. 6.34 to go in the first half, and the Dons now down nine. And I believe we have 11 in a row scored by Oakland, by my count. Burroughs outside. Botts has it batted away. And that hasn't happened too often to Botts. And then they come back, and Botts hustles and gets the steal, and they get the foul on Kangas. I'll tell you what, Boss got it blocked, but he didn't give up. He got back and yeah. smashed that ball. Well, I'll tell you what, he probably saved himself with tongue lashing from the guy on the bench. And having dealt with that man, I'm sure every week in every day in practice, he knows what he has to do if he makes something like that happen. But again, Bot's not is not a very tall guy, but how many times this year have you seen a shot like of his block Haven't like that? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. Here's Perkins. Don's really need to get it going on offense. Make some things happen. Nice moving screen by Scott. And he's getting the shot. He cuts into the lane, scoops it up, and he is fouled as he goes up. And his shot was swatted away too, but he's going to go to the line, I believe. 6.02 to go. Talking about Bot's shot getting blocked, you know, that comes from when the player reads the, uh, you know, the scouting report. Coach says, you know, this guy's going to shoot. He has a quick release, kind of anticip uh, anticipation on the other guy's part. Nice shot fake by Bosch there. Who knows, he's got an open shot. Yeah, well, they've been in your face man for man on defense for the entire game, and they really tightened it up as by, uh, Scott hits the first one. So that probably is going to have as much to do with anything about getting that shot because he was as close to him as he was. And you got to make guys who play overly aggressive pay. You gotta, you gotta make them pay with back cuts. You gotta make them pay with back screens, shot fakes, because when they're overly active that way, any fake, they're gonna go for it. Scott hit them both and gets the Dons back within seven at 28-21. Carson's gonna check back in, and Jakari will check out. Jump, 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 jump. And we're gonna have a couple of more people. Lawal is gonna come in now for Oakland. And he will replace Waterstrad, who is back in for a time, and now comes back out. Are we done now? Well, if you notice, they, they do sub a lot, and that's why they can play so hard. Got a 10-man rotation? Yeah. They can play very hard on the defensive end because they've got people coming in and out all the time. We have a little question at the uh, scorer's table now, and Greg Campy coming over to find out just what the question is. I hope they just thought it was IPFW 28 and Oakland 21. <laughs> well, whatever it is, he's satisfied because he didn't make any more noise about Maybe it. Maybe that's not it then. Well... Let's see what the Dons can do on both ends of the court in these last six minutes because they have come up somewhat short in uh, this period that uh, took them from up to down on a very quick order. They'll go in low. This is Nelson. He'll go to work. Shot up a short. Tony Brown's on the floor. Dons let that one get away. And then nice work by Perkins, and I believe he just made him turn it over, and that was... Uh, Perkins making something happen out of nothing. Well, I see a lot of fire out of Perkins. I mean, he's playing on both ends of the floor. 
I, know, I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. I think he's just grasping the opportunity to be a, the leader with Michi out of there. I mean, isn't that how it happens in, in basketball? Yeah. One player goes down, other people step up. That's why it's called yeah. team. I, it would just be basketball that he'd be talking about. Burroughs fakes. Fakes his man down. Comes in. Back outside Scott to Perkins. Back inside Burroughs. He'll spin on his man. Got nice his move. position, and he didn't get the shot to fall. Nice move. Too hard off the glass. Rebound out of there to Jones, who brings it in. On the way, it's Cassisi with the shot, and he hits a triple. Very nice little shot. Well, nice transition. And now the Dons are down 10, and that's their biggest deficit of the day. Perkins. Had, Carson had his man on his hip, just couldn't get it to him. Scott sets a pick. Perkins uses it. Now Perfero sets a pick. He hits out to Carson, gets it to Carson. Here is a shot by the corner by Scott. Rims no good. Almost offensive goaltending, really close there. But not, and John Jones has the rebound. On the floor, brings it up. Cassisi on the left side, out deep. 4.43 to go, and a few instructions from Greg Campion, apparently getting them into their offense on the half court one more time. High post, Lawal. This is Jones out top, feeds inside. Nelson spins around his man, does no good. Nice tip. And I believe they're going to rule it out. Are they going to rule offensive goaltending? Yep. I don't know about that one. It's close. Keep going. Keep going at it, Shady. It's close. Well, Don's get a break. Let's see if they can capitalize and get this back under double figures with 424 to go in the first half. Perkins gives to Botts. Doesn't quite get the good screen from Burroughs. Gets it back now from Scott. He'll put the little runner up off glass. No good. Don's have really gone ice cold. They really haven't had good shots. But nice rebound on the floor by Carson. They get a reset. Well, I kind of think that the Dons are playing, trying to play at the grizzly speed. They need to slow down and play the style of basketball they play. Well, they've gone out to 33% shooting now, Keon. Here's a drive by Carson. Goes back outside. Scott, 4-3. No short. Struggles continue. And Jones comes in the rebound. Puts it up. Puts it in. Boy, are they really cooking now. 33-21 Grizzlies. Scott to Burroughs. He has nobody to get it to. Finally gets it to Botts, gets it back himself. Kino should not be that far out. He's moving in now, trying to get a better shot, and he is fouled. Or apparently, he may have gotten Nelson in the face. And it will be Nelson who draws the foul. And we will have our media timeout, our final one of the first half, with 3.29 to go. Oakland down eight to start the game, now up 12. We'll be back. Everything you need, paper, pencils. We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know. They'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. Don Keys uh, to the win, and uh, obviously, Keon, they haven't followed out on number one, have they? Well, I tell you what, seems like we got a little shell shot here. <laughs> See if we can turn something around in the next three well, uh, And I'm mentioning the blockout thing because they have done none of that here in the last five minutes. They haven't made them work very hard because they haven't had to. And uh, one of the keys of uh, the game so far, at least on the stat sheet, Oakland has an 18 to four lead in points in the paint. You talked about it, I talked about it. It's the consistency uh, that makes it uh, possible to win these ball these ball games. Well, Burroughs is at the line. Got to score these points when the clock's not going, and he hits it. Well, one plus. Don's a 5 of 5 in the line. That means we need to get there a little more often. I'd love to see a running score at how many points they've scored in the last five or six minutes. It hasn't been many. Running around and good, and Burroughs hits them both and runs his total up to seven for the day. 
Back to a 10 point deficit. Oakland by 10. As they bring it in as the clock crowds three minutes of the first half. Cassisi, as they're getting into the deliberate situation now. Oh, Jones problem. almost got himself with a little turnover. Not a Kangas. Cuts into the lane. And the Dons make a little mistake pay there. And now they'll push it up with Perkins. Move it in. Got to work it in transition. When you get the opportunities the Dons had there, they cannot afford to get into this thing. Here is Scott. Off glass it in. Excellent move. Excellent move. Anything else would have been a charge. Well, that's your veteran senior pulling that move. Don's back within eight, and Scott has four points. Here's Jones. Inside three minutes now to go in the first half. Jones gets it back with Cassisi. He goes to work on Perkins. Kangas on a runner. Three ball. No good. Rebound on the floor. Here is Botts. Don's can cut it a little further. Here is Scott. Four three. Got it in. I'll take it, will you? Hey, it went through, didn't it? <laughs> it Might have taken a little while doing it, but it did. Hit every part of the rim on the way and down. And I'll tell you what, the Dons are so fortunate to be this close with the lull they had in their play there midway in the first half. Hey, basketball's a game of runs. You know, we've got this last five-minute segment, half of that to go. We'll see what the Dons do. But it's also sustaining the effort. Yes, sir. Here is Jones for three. No good. Rebound on the floor, and we have a foul on Oakland. Now it seems like we've taken another 180. And they call that one on Nelson, and that is his second. That'd be a nice guy to get out of there. He's been a pretty, pretty good, important thing in what they do. I think we're in a bonus if it looks right. Yeah, in double. No, not. Well, we are in the bonus. That's ninth team foul okay. on Oakland. Dons have committed 10, though, so Oakland is in the double bonus. And it'll be Carson to the line with 2.06 to go. And he is no good, so he won't get the second one. That's really too bad. It's the first free throw the Dons have missed in this game after five straight. Or six straight, I should say. Here's Jones as we're under two minutes now. Looks like Back the Dons are showing a little bit of a zone. Well, got to try something because whatever had been working before wasn't working. And there's Kangas trying another one, or it's Cassisi, I should say, and Kangas grabs the rebound. Jones cuts into the lane, back outside. Cassisi will try three, instead he feeds inside. Reverse layup is good by Lowell. Spotted his man beautifully. Rebounding is difficult in the zone. And also good recognition of who was open and who wasn't. Carson has batted, Bots has batted away, gets into the backcourt. Don still with a good point to shoot. Got about 20 seconds to get one off, but I don't think they want to take that long. They need to know the issue has to be taken care of, and they got to get some points on the board. Here's Burroughs, fakes in the lane, fades in the lane, short. Here's Carson with the rebound, and we have a tie-up, and I think this one probably is going to end up going to Oakland. No, oh, ball inside PSW. Ball. Williams going to check back in, Tim Williams. And they will pull Nelson out of there and not risk his third foul before halftime. Dons will trigger in with Carson on the baseline. Gets it to Botts. Jones is all over him as he has been all day. Try speed inside, and we have a travel on Botts. Well, he didn't get much help. There were three guys out there on the perimeter sort of waiting around, and someone of the those guys has to come in and give him an, uh, well, some think, kind of an option. I think the, uh, the athleticism of the front court, you know, the guards of the, uh, of the Grizzlies is kind of bothering Botts a little bit. Uh, athleticism and experience. Yeah. Remember, these are two freshmen we're starting out yeah. there, although Perkins is out there now. You're right, Dean. Jones. Now we have Williams fading. No, oh, got it. Rebound inside Lowell. Ball's on the floor, goes out of bounds, and it'll belong to Oakland. Nice hustle there by Jakari Johnson. As uh, no fear of getting the floor burn. Goes with the territory. Went after it. 52.8 to go in the first half. Don's down seven. Kangas will trigger. I think uh, Oakland Bench wanted to get a little foul there, but it was not to be. Jones gets a little bit of a screen, puts a shot up and hits it. And now uh, Oakland wants a timeout off of this. Apparently they want to uh, get the situation there. The 35, that's a good call, it'll be a 30. And I believe it's 30. Yeah, it is. Uh, with 43 seconds to go, this is a good call because you're going to force the Dons to give you a possession again before you, uh, before the half. I tell you what, that was great coaching. You know, he was aware of it the whole time. You can tell he wanted it. Uh, he's going to throw something defensively at the Dons probably that they haven't seen so far, which is going to cause them to take more 
more time to shoot the ball than they, they normally would. And then conversely, he'll give himself some time some to work time the play for the, the last one. Right. It is 37-28, Oakland. They got onto a hole by uh, with some sloppy play early in the game. The Dons got out to the 8-0 lead. And since the Dons uh, had a 19-17 lead at about the midway point of the first half, Oakland has really taken control of this one. In fact, outscored the Dons since that point 20-9. And, and the Dons are only that close because of a nice recent run that got the back to single figures. Jakari Johnson goes outside to Burroughs. As the coach is screening us, so we'll go off the monitor here. Burroughs on the spin. Gets back outside. It's Perkins. 23 to shoot. Or 14 to shoot, 23 on the clock. Here's Botts. Gets it to Perkins. Comes into the lane. Feeks outside. Burroughs going to back his man down. Six seconds to shoot, five seconds to shoot. Goes out of bounds, and it will belong to the Dons, and they only have three seconds to shoot. And 11.8 on the clock, the big clock. Whatever they're going to do, they're going to have to do it quick, Keon. I think I saw the Oakland coach was trying to look and see what Coach Fife was calling. All right, Jakari's going to have to unload it. He puts it up. It's partially blocked. It's going to be a shot clock violation. And now Oakland has uh, seven seconds to make something happen. Gets up ahead to Lawal. He carried the ball. Didn't get it called. Here is Cassisi with a long bomb at the buzzer. It is no good. And we will go to the break with Oakland, a 37-28 leader over IPFW. And Dons have some work to do in that locker room because there are things to fix. We'll be right back. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Feeding a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam. Because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out Saturday February 2nd because cancer doesn't play by the rules. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at the Coliseum, where Oakland, the eight to nothing leader out of the trailer, out of the shoot, is a nine point leader at the half. And Ken Henderson with me, Dean Pantazzi, here at uh, sidelines at halftime. And uh, Ken, tale of two games. The first one was about four minutes long and it was very good. And the second one was 16 minutes long and it wasn't. Yeah. Well, we. Um Seemed like we had a little bit of a lull. I really believe that the defensive pressure of Oakland is really bothering our team. I really do. 
Well, it's quite obvious because they're not able to get into the offense. I don't think they've had really two good clean shots in the entire first half. Whatever they got, they really had to work for. And the only things they were able to really work well was what they were able to get in transition, and that didn't happen very often. Yeah, um, and any, any good coach will tell you that the key to the defense always starts with the guards. If you can put good, solid defensive pressure on the people with the ball, it makes it difficult for those people to pass the ball inside, and we all know the game is best played inside out. All right, and, and you're in the locker room now, and you've been in a number of these halftime locker rooms. Uh, obviously, taking care of the basketball would be the first thing I'd want to do yeah. to deal with that. And I'm okay that that takes about 10 seconds. What do you go from there? Well, I'll tell you what you do. When you're in there right now, if you're Coach Fife, you're telling your team, there's a difference between playing fast and playing in a hurry. And right now, I think we're playing in a hurry. We can pick up the tempo, but we don't have to match their tempo. We have to play our game and try to converse to get them to play our game as opposed to playing their game. And whoever did the scouting report on this thing and saying blocking out, blocking out, blocking out was a key element was right. And unfortunately, the boys haven't done a very good job of that. Well, sometimes when you block out, there's a there's a double job. You've got to block out, and then you've got to go get the ball. I remember one play we watched. Everybody seemed to block out, but the ball hit the ground. So we blocked out, but we didn't finish the job. You've got to block out, and then you've got to go get the ball. So uh, there, there's work to be done, and the work is being done at halftime as we speak. It is 37-28. The Dons trail it to Oakland at the half. Back with more in just a minute. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really, we should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglyceride, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pink out? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at halftime, 37-28, a score over the leading IBFW here at the Memorial Coliseum. Earlier in this afternoon, the Oakland women came into town, and Chris Paul, your IBFW ladies beat them 75-70, to and don't want to get into that too much because uh, it is what it is, but the thing is your kids are playing well right now, and they seem to grasp the importance of getting these games done in the conference because it's down the road in that seating situation with the tournament. This is so important. Well, one of the things we talk about is in order to win a conference championship, you got to win at home and then steal some games on the road. 
Um, and obviously in the position that we were in, we're already having three conference losses, it was very important that we held or stood strong here at home because we were already two games behind Oakland and we couldn't afford to fall three behind. So our backs were against the wall. We challenged our kids and we came up big today this, or this afternoon. Looking for the long picture now, this is a very busy time of the year. You have to coach a basketball team. You got to get them through practices. You got to get them through games. And yet you got to go out there and hit the gyms and see what, what the, where the future Lady Mastodons are. How do you make that all work? Well, one, you don't sleep too much. Um, but what we do is we just try to divide everything up. You know, all four coaches have something we're responsible for. But one thing we do every day is we recruit. Every day. We get together every day and somebody's responsible for something because we all know the lifeblood of, of this business is recruiting. So you just try to prioritize things, scouting, recruiting right now, and then some other things go on the back burner like our marketing and, and promotions just sort of have to wait till the season's over and then we go out and do those things when we have a little bit more time. Is it, I mean, you have to hit the schedules. Everybody has a specific thing and you got to pretty much hit those numbers right on or this doesn't work, does it? Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's just a lot of numbers. You've got to throw a lot of numbers out there. We have to talk to a lot of kids and try to get some players here. We were fortunate enough to have a very high profile recruit that we want here today. So I'm glad we put on a good show for her. Hopefully we'll, you know, hopefully she saw that IPFW is somebody that, that, that can play in this conference. And we're not here just to show up that we're here to compete and try to win a conference championship. What do you think the magic number is total wins to get yourself in a four seed or higher for the tournament? Well, I believe if we get to nine and nine, if we could get to nine, the way the numbers are falling right now, if we could finish 500, nine and nine or 10 and eight, I think we'll finish in the top four. Because see, the Dakotas are not eligible for, for the tournament this year. So if we could fall nine and nine or 10 and eight, that'll give us one of the top four seeds and for being the first year in the conference, and if we were in the top four, I think that would be a very successful season and something we could build on for next year. There you go, a lot on your plate. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Dane. Congratulations on your win this afternoon. Thank Chris you. Paul of the IPFW Women. We'll be right back. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What's it like when you hear your calling? Calls you to go halfway around the world to share your skills to serve people you've never met to do things you never thought you could what will you do when you hear your calling Peace Corps life is calling how far will you go? Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd because cancer doesn't play by the rules. Little indication of what's been going right and wrong. Here's when it was when it was going right. Tad Klockemeyer with the early three ball when the Nons were in that nice early run where they got out to that eight nothing lead. And then uh, you had Burroughs decide he was going to take one out. That was the good time, Keon. That was Unfortun early on. Unfortunately, it didn't stay that way. It was a bomb away and nice rebound inside by Carson. 
who is uh, has six points at the half. But here's where it started to work for them. Working the game in transition, getting the shots down, not into their half court game, and more of it was this, turnovers. And uh, kind of having the Dons with a struggle. Cassisi making that play and then uh, getting it up top and outside. And Kangas, who is their leading scorer in the half with 13 points, has three of five from outside, back of the arc. Uh, worked in here, nice play here by Perkins to get it off the bank and then uh, have a little bit more of work here in nearby Burroughs. And a nice shot outside. But uh, again, this is uh, an indication of what has been happening here, and that's the shots going down. They're working the ball inside, uh, and the boxing out just is not happening. And uh, that was one place in there where uh, Lawal, who really came in and played well and scored six points for them, did well. And then inside here is Nelson. They held him down a little bit. He's well under his average right now. But then there's Kangas with another one of his bombs. And this is more of an indication of what we saw in the last 10 minutes as Kangas hits an off-balance shot. He is leading their leading scorer with 13 points. And uh, probably a big architect of why they have come here with a nine-point lead as we enter the second half. Well, I tell you. Don's made a nice little move here and uh, then the shot there by, by uh, Scott. Good shot. So, you know, it, it's they're fixing things. I hope the dealt, things have been dealt with. That the, the, They bring out that uh, scouting report and say, blocking out, blocking out, and it uh, would be nice to be able to do that. And there's a guy who's really hurt them. Uh, uh, it's Jones. He has 10 points. Their other double figures four. Dons are hit 9 of 26 from the field, 34.6, and they started out hitting at about 60%, so that's uh, probably even deceptive. It's not been as good as that. Conversely, Oakland had missed its first four shots, but they've recovered to go 48.5. Uh, the steals, there's been a key thing. Six for the uh, Oakland Grizzlies, four for the Dons. Look at the rebounding of an advantage, though, 23 to 12. Wow. And that's uh, another big part of it. But uh, overall, the team in the black has been outdoing the team in the white pretty much up and down the board. Well, my, my key factor, I watched those replays over and over again. You know what? It seems as if we could get a hold on Jonathan Jones. We could kind of turn the tide here. He seems to be the uh, the thing that gets them going. Somebody has to get in Kangas' face, too. He's not missing yeah, the shots. Yeah, he's a great shooter. And I he's bet you. 5 of 8 from the field and 3 of 5 back of the arc. And I would bet you probably 3 of those 5 came off assists from Jones. I'll probably say. Here's an inside pass to McCloskey as we're back in for the second half. His shot is an air ball. Nice defense by the Dons, and let's hope this continues. Plackmeyer. Dons down nine as we begin the final 20 minutes. Carson, Botts. Botts on the drive, cut off by Jones, who's done a nice job on him. Here's Carson spinning in the lane. Had his man open, didn't have enough. Plackmeyer, 17 to shoot. Dons still have plenty of time to get something to happen. Here's. Burroughs far away from the basket. This is the most time I've seen him spend away from the basket in any game I've seen this year. Maybe in part of the game plan. Plackmeyer gets the screen from Carson. Plackmeyer with a tough shot, and he just beats the shot clock. Had about two minutes, two seconds to spare. Plackmeyer hit the first shot of the game. Now he hits the first shot of the second half, and the Dons are back within seven. And a difficult shot at that. Plackmeyer with five. Those two shots we talked about, the early three, and that shot right there. Cassisi back outside to Jones. Triple draws into a triple, he drives through that triple team and hits the short runner out, it's no good. Ball's tapped back out to him and they have a fresh 35. Cassisi now left side. This is Klosky trying the bomb, got it. Jumper, it's a two. And it's back to a seven point lead. Or nine point lead, I should say. Botts, back outside. Scott, here's Blackenmeyer for three. No good, ball on the floor and rebounded out of there by McCloskey. Did you see the block out? Oh, they're doing a good job of it. And there they tried the alley-oop inside to Nelson, and he got popped. And they got Scott for his third. So uh, Scott, who had to sit early with two quick personal fouls in the first half, didn't waste much time getting the third one here early in the second half. And Waterstrat will trigger it in. Dan Waterstrat gets inside to Jones, goes to work on Botts, goes around Botts, puts it in. And got it over the block of Burroughs on top of that. 41-30 Oakland. There's the effectiveness of Jones I was talking about earlier. He seems to be the, the things that keeps him going. Well, I'll tell you what, they're also showing a little bit more quickness. There's a water strat with a block, and Oakland will bring it back up to Jones. Cassisi goes in low to water strat. Back outside Cassisi. 
Nelson into the lane, steps through, puts it up, no good, tip up, good. Well, everything is working for them. Water Strat on the tip. One thing you can be sure of, if Nelson is a guy who averages uh, about 19 a game, you can be sure that if he only has six, he's going to go after his average. So look and for it him isn't going to take long for Coach to a 30-second timeout and figure out just what's going to go on. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Didn't take long for uh, things to go awry here in the second half again as the nine point deficit has now become a 13 point deficit. And that's a wise 30 to get out there before this thing really gets out of hand, Keon. Yeah, we got to do something and switch it around because this thing could go from 13 to 20 in a hurry. Oh, especially the way these guys are playing because they're not doing anything wrong right now. And they being Oakland. Blackmeyer drives the baseline, cuts inside. Here's Burroughs up. Good. Count it well the foul. Maybe the best work of that kind of a play in the entire game for the Dons. Pretty good possession. They were patient, got something on the baseline, didn't pick up the dribble. Nice shovel pass. Good shot by Burroughs. Well, great finish by Burroughs, but I give you a lot of credit to Plockmeyer because he's, he's with that move, he drew the defender away from Burroughs to create the opening for him to have the shot. Absolutely. And completing a three-point play, Burroughs crosses into double figures for 10 points, and he's the first Don to do that. Here's the replay on that, and that is just pretty play. Heck, Tell you what, Bernie, wanted to run that about two or three times. We enjoyed it. Yeah, and give us two points each time yeah. we played. There you go. And the free throw. Yeah. Okay, back to the 10-point game now, and uh, it is Oakland into the half court and being a little bit more del deliberate this time. The CC crosses over there, Waterstrad. He'll go back to Cassisi. They're getting away with this because they're putting theirs up high, Keon. Absolutely. Jones back outside to CC. He'll try the triple. Front of the rim, no good. Nobody blocked. I'll tell you what, that the only thing that prevented that from being another uh, comeback play was that uh, he couldn't hold on to the ball because Waterstrad had another bunny inside. Yes, sir. So the Don's benefited from a rare Oakland boo-boo, and now they can cut it back to double or single figures. Scott goes over to Carson, going low to Burroughs, has Plackemeyer. Back inside Burroughs. See if he backs his man down. Had a one on one situation, but all of a sudden it became the two on one. Here is Scott. Tries to drive it in. Cut in no man's land. Back outside to Burroughs. 11 to shoot. Back to Scott. He's open for three. Got it. I'll tell you what, when he doesn't have to Scott stop and think about it too much, he seems to shoot it better. Yes, he Back to a seven point game. That's where we were at halftime. No, actually, it was a nine point game at halftime, really. So actually, we're making progress. Jones. Way up high in the key to Nelson. He'll cross it over here. Waterstead. Shot up. Shot good. And Waterstead is beginning to feel it inside. Don't like the idea that they're able to get those long passes up like that. Well, because they're arcing them up high, they can't get picked around. Now, almost, now we do have a steal. And we have a foul. And it's Blackmeyer and uh, compounded the mistake on the turnover with the mistake <laughs> on the foul. So we have our officials timeout, 45-36 Oakland maintaining their nine point lead at the 15-57 mark of the second half. We'll be right back. Get 
out to Pink Out, Saturday, February 2nd, at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out, Saturday, February 2nd, because cancer doesn't play by the rules. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, you want? Where you there? I play the bar. Bar. Me. Shanti. Yep, Tanyoki. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sorry. are making it happen. Lucky. Ha ha hoochoon. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Signal is the high. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Dane Fife breaking his huddle after this timeout. The first media timeout of the second half is Don's down nine. And Keon, they're just getting roasted inside of the Dons. They're being out-rebounded 27 to 14 and 24 to 6 in points in the paint. Yeah, I'll tell you, and those those things about blocking out that we keep talking about are so paramount and so important so that we can get some second chance shots as opposed to them all the time. So Oakland will put it back in, trying to get that lead back to double figures. Cassisi, right side, guarded nicely by Botts, and he'll have to kick it out and get the reset to Jones. Jonathan Jones with Perkins on him, sets it, gets it on the high to Lawal, Kangas. Yep. Jones guarded by Perkins. He'll cut in the lane. Fade from about 20. No good. Rebounds on the floor of Lowell. Batted away from him by Scott. Nice play by DeWitt Scott. And the Dons will come back and try and get it down to a seven-point game. Perkins to Carson. Had bots cutting through. Now gives it to him. Carson gets it back to Perkins. Scott cut through. Was not open. They'll go low to ba Burrows. He'll move in. He has an opening. He'll put it up. He'll get fouled. I'm surprised it took that long to get there. He really had a nice opening there about two seconds before he actually started to take it. Yeah, sometimes when you get the ball in the post, those guys like to observe, but sometimes you just got to get it and go. Well, what it was, I think it was one of the rare times where they didn't fall back in and have a guy in the middle there. Yeah. Usually they've been covering that opening, and one of the rare times they didn't, he probably was prepared for them to be ready for yeah, it again. That's that defense, that flow you've been talking about, and he was just probably caught off guard. But he gets two free throws. He has 10 points. He averages 13, as you can see. And Burroughs is 3 of 3 from the line, and he is now 4-4. Four four. Nice to have a big guy who can have a nice touch at the line. Well, and there has been some times when he has uh, struggled at the line. In the last two or three ball games, he's found that touch. Dane Fife making uh, a couple of adjustments uh, to what he wants the guys to do when they get back on defense. And Burroughs puts the second one in the air, and that rings no good. And that's when I would say it. You should learn about that. It always happens. Never, that never that fails. <laughs> Jones. Very deliberate, sort of looking uh, well, it's like football style. They're calling the play from the bench. Jones will have it now guarded by Perkins. Tries to lose Perkins, does not get that job done. Out to Cassisi. He wants Lowell in a certain spot to set a screen. Tried to get it from the Kangas, but Kangas was guarded there. They get it into Lowell. Carson with a nice play inside and bats it out of bounds. That was nice help defense. Right there, I saw Perkins chasing Jones. Should have played off a little bit can't hurt you on the side of the floor. Get in the middle so that you can in intercept that pass. If no, there's well, still plenty of time for this job to get done. But uh, better start pretty quick. Inside they go with Rotterstedt. Drop, block, and Carson uh, looked like he got all ball. Might have got him on the body. I'm going to oh, say I got was him on the arm. Uh, we could debate that. But we'd lose because yeah. we have no authority. And our shirts are the wrong color. That's true. Waterstat will go to the line. A 81% free throw, but he's only been there 16 times. And it's good. Reese trying to get that lead back up to 10 here if he can make this one. Autostrat on the game, going for his eighth point, and he got it. They are four of five of seven from the free throw line. Don's are eight of 10. Perkins. CC on him and very tightly gets to bots. <laughs> Jones is just as tight on him. The Perkins. Here's Carson. Cuts in the lane. Spins around. Tries to get it up. Draws the foul. That's good aggressive play. He's going to get that done. Kind of see a reoccurring theme here. The ball 
was being driven to the basket as opposed to a lot of outside shots. But it all goes for naught if you don't hit the free throws. And uh, Carson is two of three there. And on the year, Carson as a free thrower is at 74%. And he got the first one. So he's crowding his average as well. Played well. He's a little bit, each time out, you see a little bit more of Dave Carson's game. Yeah. And that gets it back to an eight point deficit at 47 to 39. Starting to get to the point now where maybe a stop every time is a necessity, but it wouldn't hurt to get a few more of them. Jones gets around Perkins, but to get help from Burroughs, denies that. Kangas goes through his room, Perkins strips him, and it goes out of bounds and went off, off uh, DeWitt Scott and belongs to Oakland. Good defense, bad bounce. Yeah, but keep those efforts going and some of those will work your way. Jones pounds the ball once. Tries to get an opening guy to Lowell. He was covered. Gets it into Kangas. Kangas throws it outside and throws it to Botts. He's on the way. One on two. Doesn't have the numbers. Brings it on back. Good decision. Very smart. Perkins drives the baseline. Fades. Got it. Little runner. And this is all of a sudden a six-point game. Everything there starts with a great decision made by Botts not to go all the way and try to make something happen by bringing it back And out. you also got to stop on this end. That's what you have to do to get these deficits down. Perkins has seven points, and he's guarding Jones really tightly. Kangas loses by, uh, Scott. Shot bends over the rim. That'll end up being as good as a turnover. In fact, I think it goes into the books like that, and it'll be the Don's ball. I think I think I see Perkins kind of taking this thing uh, uh, with Jones personally, making sure he doesn't get to the basket and make a lot of shots. Let's see if the Dons can cut it a little closer. The down six can cut it to four with a bucket, three with a three. Ball batted out of bounds. King is trying to get it away and bat it away from Scott. 13-20 to go in the game. Dane Fife indicating here is there something he'd like to see happen, and he shouts it out to the boys. And Perkins checks with coach and says, okay, I think I got it. Let's move it. We get it a little lot. Bots almost got cut off and cut in no man's land. Gets it to Perkins. Outside Carson. Had the opening. He'll try it from the baseline. He'll hit it. It's a four-point game. Now the people that are dressed in the blue are getting a little more excited. The ones in the black are a little quieter right now. Got something to be excited about. These guys are playing great basketball right now. Right, it's got to be sustained. Jones gets to the lane. Tops up the 17-footer. That's rim no good. Bounces no good. Rebound on the floor. And it will belong to the Dons. I mean, when these guys shoot, Dean, they go after it on yeah. the offensive end. But if you don't let them get there, which is, of course, easier said than done sometimes. Locking out. Yep. You can prevent that kind of problem. So we have some, uh, some movement here as we see uh, Keith Benson, who had been in the game briefly, coming back out. And I think he came back in Waterstead, come back in. Also in for them is Tim Williams. Don seemed to have the same guys on the floor. Perkins. To Scott. Low down to Carson. See, he tries to back his man down. Exactly what he tries to do. Puts it up over the rim. No good. Got it. Starting to show touch. And hey, hey, Kerry, we got a two-point game. And just like that, we're in it. I'm halfway surprised they're not calling a timeout. But they're not. Jones caught in the air. Ball on the floor. Turnover. Dons can tie it. Kind of that Phil Jackson approach. Let your team work it out. When you trust them, sometimes well, What he's trying to do that. is get him to the media timeout. He knows he may need these later. That's, you know, somewhat good coaching. And you do still do have the lead. But it may go away. The Dons can convert here. Here is Scott. Perkins. Has bots. Had an opening. In the lane. Fading. And we almost had a tie. Not quite. Back of the rim. Rebounded out of there by Williams. Runs it into the forecourt. Takes it all the way. Puts it off glass. No good. Tip up. No good. Rebound. Scott. Once again, the Dons can tie. Perkins. Stops short. Goes between the rings. Dives on his man. Fades off glass. No good. Rebound. Perkins. Er, Burrows up to tie it. Well, it's been a long road back. And now the Dons have tied the game. Now let's see if there's another stop. They've stopped them the last three trips, and that's how they've tied it. Got to make sure we sustain that, Dean, because it takes a lot of energy to come back. You bet. Cassisi inside Waterstead, back outside. Now back into him. Waterstead with the hook. No good. Rebound on the floor. Cassisi puts it up, and no good, but we have a foul call. 
one of the keys to blocking out Dean is not just turn around. you got to find a spot. Time out on the floor, 47-47 our scores. The Dons have come all the way back to tie it. Back after this. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Well, we're back, Dean, and you can see Perkins with that a little inside-out crossover move, and he goes up, nice dribble, one dribble, pull-up shot with the rebound by Burroughs, and he puts it in just like that. Tie game. Well, one of the few times that they didn't block out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're not perfect. They will do some things that aren't right, and that's when you have to take advantage of it. But uh, now it'll have Cassisi at the line, fouled just before the uh, timeout was taken. As we're about halfway through the second half of the Dons who trailed by nine at the half after getting out to an eight nothing lead, have come back. And I commented to you, Keon, in the break that uh, that timeout might have been as medicinal for the IPFW as it was for Oakland. The CC misses. This kind of interesting. I didn't realize this. He has not scored. He's been uh, a big part of what they've been doing. And that's his first point. That's amazing to me. It averages about 9.6. That's his first point of the ball. Yeah, game. but I tell you what, he hasn't been he hasn't been shy about launching balls. He just hasn't dropped any. Here's Perkins on the drive to put it up. No good, but he'll go to the line. The Dons have a chance to take the lead. You know, Dean, I just witnessed something for the first time. The crowd was so loud I didn't even hear the whistle. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. First time of day. What's a better thing is it was coming from the blue crowd. Chris Perkins to the line. He has seven points. He has not been to the line today. And he's tied it. He has not been to the line that much this year. Only uh, an 89% shooter. Not better than that, he's a 90% shooter because he's nine of 10. And this can put him in the lead, and it does. Didn't think that was going to see that time, Keon, but again, it's still 10.50 for making it count. This is our first lead since what? Uh, eight to eight, I believe, right? I believe so. Yeah. 19 to 17 in the first half. Okay, okay. But it's I, still been a long time. I knew you would know, Dean. You got a great mind. Well, for some things. <laughs> Here's Cassisi. We want, we want him to shoot. We want Cassisi to shoot. We don't want Jones to shoot. He's got the ball. We definitely don't want Kangas to shoot. He puts one up and it is blocked by Scott and taken away by Botts. He had uh, Perkins up ahead and didn't see him. Now the Dons will take it in. Feed in low to Burroughs. He feels good right now. I think he wants to get it back up there. That's he wants to get it back up there. He's going to dick inside, duck inside, put it up. He's going to get three seconds. And oh, I'll tell you what, Dane Five bailed them out with a timeout because Greg Campy is absolutely right. He was in there five seconds, not three. I tell you what, Coach Fife, that's great coaching. I, I don't know if I would even thought about calling timeout. I would have been screaming. Well, he was trying to make things happen, and everything was just uh, working so hard that he couldn't uh, make it go. So the Dons with a 49-48 lead as we are in this, uh, this break here. Mastodon's website for the latest scores and stats. It's available on the World Wide Web at GoMastodons.com. Check up on the teams, the players, and order tickets at the official Mastodon Athletics website, GoMastodons.com, which our good friend Rudy Jovich and his cohorts do a lot of work on to make work. The, uh, you know, 
I mean, who doesn't go on the web these days? Yeah, constantly updated. That As, thing is real time. Almost. Yeah, and on top of that, it makes it. They've made it look better and better over yeah. the last year. Perkins triggers inside. Don's up one, trying to add to it. Out to Carson. Carson drives into the lane, bounces his man, puts up an alpha shot. It's blocked, but blocked right into the hands of Scott to, bo to Botts. Now low to Burroughs. See if he tries to drive his man again. He'll take him in, put it up, no foul. Puts it up again, no foul. That time they got a foul. Lowell is incensed. He, he thinks he didn't do anything. But uh, the officials beg to differ. And Burroughs, who has... Uh, all of a sudden discovered, hey, if I stay inside, I can get some things done. Remember how much time he was spending outside? Yeah, you almost thought he was a fifth guard. Yeah. There. <laughs> and now he's gone inside. And look at the wonderful things that have happened. He has two. Number one. Good. Dodds of 13 of 15 from the arc. And that's a good thing because they've been outshot 20 to 16 in field goals. Burroughs with 14. Carson has 12, Scott has 10. Three guys in double figures, and Perkins is right on the threshold with nine. Burroughs' second shot, good. And this is a conference game, which means we're right here with oh, these guys. Oh, man, you got you to gotta win these. We were talking to Chris Paul about uh, the women's team at halftime, how important these games are to get for the seeding. Inside it goes, Waterstead puts it in. That ended a long dry spell for them and gets him back within one. And here we go. Waterstead cracks double figures with 10. Perkins gets a screen from Burroughs on a pick and roll. Perkins on the drive, puts it off glass. No good, tip up, good by Carson. Dustin Duran, Burroughs. Oh, they give it to Burroughs. I'll tell you, I thought it was Carson's basket. We'll go with their call, yeah. but I thought that was Carson's basket yeah, for sure. It should have been, but Burroughs will take it. It helps his average. <laughs> <laughs> Players actually think about that? Oh, of yeah. course they do. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm, I'm, my tongue is so firmly in my cheek. Jones <laughs> kicks it back outside. Waterstat lays it in. Okay, a little bit of blockout problem in the last couple of possessions after the Dons have been so good at it for a long time. Now let's see if they can convert and get the lead back up to three. Bots to Burroughs. Back to Bots. Had an opening. Kicks back outside. Perkins fakes the shot to Carson. He's going on the drive. He says, I want it. Then he puts it in, and they call travel on him. Dane Five saying, oh, the boys have settled down a little bit more. Although he can't be anything but happy about what he's seen here by the last four minutes because they played well. They played well. They played extremely well. Now we've got to see if we can sustain. You've been now, saying that word from, from the jump. Absolutely. And it's the whole ad run. Now, now we need to stop here after two successive conversions where you didn't box out here on the offensive end. Jones. Waterstat off his knee. But it's a kick and it's off one of the Dons, I believe. And it'll be... Uh, Oakland's ball with 19 to shoot. 8.31 to go. Don's lead at 53-52 after trailing it by nine at the half. Jones to kick it in. Gets it off Cassisi with the shot. That's his first one he's hitting. It's a big one. A triple that puts them back in front 55-53. Well, he's going to hit one sooner or later. Well, you know this team's not going to go away. We've got to take it. You bet. This is going to be a battle. And let's see who has it left at the end. Perkins into the lane. Cut off there. Don's not cutting anybody in the middle right now, and that's going to hurt him. Carson to Botts. Been with this unit out there for a long time. Bad pass. Just wasn't there. And here's Jones on the drive to lay it up and in. Well, you just can't make mistakes. This is a good team. I realize the mistakes have been minimal here in the second half, but they have come now, and uh, the lead is now gone, and now the Don's trail by four. All of those things we did right, a couple of mistakes, and they're right back on top. This Here's Burroughs on a nice move, and I'll tell you what, he was in no man's land and got bailed out. Lawal get the foul? It is Lawal's foul, and we have our media timeout. Oakland, after trailing by three, is now up four with 7.37 to go. We'll be right back. Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? <gasps> Allium Sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 
Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd because cancer doesn't play by the rules. When he was a player. <laughs> 57 53 our score. Oakland after trailing by three when the Dons made a terrific run to get uh, from back down nine to a point where they were at one point up three. Uh, Oakland has uh, batting down the hatches a little bit here in the middle point of the second half. For the game, Oakland is shooting it at 46%. The Dons in the second half have ratcheted it up to 53% from the field after really an abysmal 34.6 in the first half. And Burroughs is at the line. 17 points for him. He has 6 of 7 from the line. Dane Fife says, what will happen in these final 737? I want my guys to play hard. Delivering is Burroughs. He's got it. 15 of 17. I'll tell you one thing he's going to be pretty happy with. Free throw shooting. You bet. The rest of the game could get up to that. Actually, they've cut into that uh, rebounding deficit as well. It's now just 30 to 1 to 23, and it was considerably more than that. Burroughs hits the second one, and we have a two-point game again. And Keno's up there to 19 points. Jonathan Jones to bring it up for Oakland. To Derek Nelson. McCloskey. Cece goes inside. Bad pass. Belongs to the Dons. They have a chance to tie. Okay. Nelson is going to try to get the ball. He wants to take over. He's one of the leading scorers, and he's frustrated. So we got to keep him frustrated. No, I tell you what, you feed a guy like that because his frustration will build, and he'll keep missing shots. Yeah, that's okay for me. That theory works all the time. That was a bad pass, but here's Scott for a three. Bad pass. And they this took, hey, they took applesauce and made it apples out of it, or whatever the term is. They took a bad situation and made it a good one. And Scott hits his third three and now has 13 points. That was a turnover about to happen, and it came three points. Jones goes to work with Perkins. Can't get away from Perkins. Still working on him. Goes back outside. Cassisi trying to put the shot in. He puts the shot up and fakes it, and we get a blocking call on, I believe, Burroughs. Yep. And on Kino, that is his second. So no real situation with foul trouble there yet. Tell you what, while it's getting feisty on the court, it's getting a little feisty in the stands. Had an IPFW throw, fan throw an IPFW t-shirt in the Oakland crowd, and they didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, those red-coated uh, ushers are nowhere to be found yet. They'll, they'll be over there soon. Cassisi hits the first one. And Kangas checks back in. That's the guy who's had the good hot shooting touch, and I would imagine he's in there for the duration. Cassisi, after not having any points for the first though, 30 minutes of this game, has now got five and now has six. And Oakland's back up 59-58. Perkins, as the Dons try to regain the lead. Carson, back to Perkins. Kari Johnson ran the baseline. They did not see him. Now Perkins on the, gets it outside. Now they get it to Scott for three more. That's no good. Good battle by Perkins to get the ball, but he just couldn't come up with it. And it is Jones that comes up with it. He pushes Carp Perkins away. Didn't get any call on it. Shot is no good. Ball's on the floor. Cave back outside. And Oakland makes a nice save. Block out, block out, block out. Greg Campy basically saying the same thing. And he has something in his mind with the, the emotion that he's making there on the sideline right in front of us. And they're going to set up a play. And they have 20 to shoot. Nelson. Jones has it out top. Perkins is on him. Perkins has done a nice job on Nelson. Inside, this shot up and good by Nelson, who cut in very nicely, and whoever was supposed to pick him up didn't do it. Well, now we know what this is. The motion. Getting Nelson the ball. <laughs> well, and, and on top of that, Pop, somebody set a screen because uh, whoever was on him was screened out. Yeah. Nice execution. Yeah, and they, they love to run that screen, whether it's elbow extended or baseline, and that guy comes off and he's yeah. wide open. Well, the Dons, the Dons have denied some of that here in the, in the late going, but uh, that was one place where it actually was. Shot is no good on the free throw, and the Dons down three have Burroughs with the rebound. Burroughs going to bring it up. Well, they better give it to somebody who's supposed to handle it. Yeah, he didn't get, he's not going to give it up. Now Botts has it. 
every player wants to be a point guard at least once a game. Yeah, but some are more suited for it. <laughs> Here's Perkins fading. No, no, it's going to go. Boy, that was real close to offensive goaltending. But nice rebound out of there by Waterstrat. And Oakland with a three-point lead and 5.29 to go. We'll try to kill some clock and make it a good possession. Nelson, Jones, guarded by Perkins. Going the lane to Waterstat. Little baby hook on the back of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Burroughs. He's grabbed six of those. And now the Dons can cut it back to within one with another good successful trip. A triple will tie it. Perkins, Burroughs. Burroughs still handling it. Perkins trying to work it out, and he was going to start to get a call on it, and he had to hand it off to Scott. Here is Botts. Bounce pass Carson, fakes the shot, drives to the lane, off glass, got it. Actually got a clean shot, it looked like it was going to go off glass. Carson's having a nice night. That's his 14th point. Take that every night. One point game. Jones, Cassisi, bots on him. Let's see what they try to set up this time. Goes to Jones, he's going to go into the lane, fade, caught, caught in the midair. Here's a shot inside. They're going to try and get into Nelson, and the ball is batted out of bounds. Cassisi has it, but that won't work as we have a foul on Carson. And that will be his fourth if I've got it right. But you know, Dean, that's a pretty tough call. I mean, I'm not questioning it at all. You know, they, they have a better view, but that's a tough call because it seems as if he was run over. Oh, they only have him for three. Well, Don, Don did everything they could to stop that one. Nelson to the line. First one is no good, and he's not going to get another one. And Botts grabs the rebound off the floor. And the Dons with a chance to take the lead. Batted out of his hands. Scott saves it and saves it back to Perkins. Dons into the forecourt. See if they can take advantage of that break. Perkins to Botts. Fakes left. Comes right. To Scott for three. Got it. Is the whip feeling good? He should. That's his fourth triple. He has 16 points. Boy, that's been overdue, Keon. He has been so overdue to start hitting these big shots. Now about to stop. 3.51 to go. Jones. Perkins on him. Tries to drive on Perkins. Gets around him. Perkins boxing from behind. Puts it up again. Good. And it's a foul. This is college basketball, dude. Man, this is I'll, what it's all I'll about. tell you what. He was just very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Because that ball... Came down within two to the reach of two dons, and he was the guy in the right place to get up and put it in. No, no taking away from the good play, but he was very fortuitous to be where he was. 63 all right now, pending a free throw. We'll be back. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports. I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pink out? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Three minutes and 41 seconds from the end of this one. Derek Nelson will have a free throw after uh, a putback underneath the offensive board for Oakland just before the timeout was called. And if he can make that, the Dons uh, will have to surrender the lead and Oakland will have it again. Nelson has eight points. You say he was averaging 15? Well, Nelson's done a nice job on him. 18. 18.4 he's averaging. About seven rebounds. He really game. hasn't had a lot of shots. He's only taken eight shots. Oh, they, well, they, they've got uh, Jones at the line. I didn't think he was the one that got it, but anyway, he does, and he's going to go to the green line and put it up and get it, and he will give Oakland the lead at 64-63. 
Oakland fans making some noise. IPMW fans would like to have a reason to make some noise. Perkins couldn't get a screen from Scotts, couldn't use it. Now he's on the drive, spins in the lane, dumps it down low. Pretty play and inside that is Burroughs. Beautiful dish by Perkins. You ought to have be able some way to be able to sort of put a parenthesis around that particular assist for Perkins. And Burroughs has 21. That was such an exciting pass, almost yelled out like a fan. Should be. <laughs> because it put the Dons in the lead. Jones fades from 15. Back of the rim, no good. Bat and over the back, water stat. It's his first foul. And that put the uh, Dons in the bonus. Seven fouls on Oakland. So. Right. And Keno Burroughs, who is 8 of 9 from the line and has 21 points, is going to the line again with 3.06 to go. Dane Fife trying to make an appointment with the official as uh, this is all going on, saying, well, that's been happening all day. I'm glad you finally <laughs> caught one. We've outscored him by 10 this half. Hopefully 11 and 12 here. Boy, Burroughs has been a new man when he started working inside. He missed the free throw. And Nelson picks off the rebound. Three minutes to go in this one. Jones gets down low. Cassisi puts it up, partially blocked, but not enough. And Campy wanted to get a timeout and couldn't get it done. So now the Dons will have it, and they trail it by one. Perkins. 25 to shoot. Let's see if they can get into something kind of with some kind of rhythm. Burroughs on the move. Inside couldn't get it. Now they get it to him. He has a bunny. Dunk it down. He worked real hard to get open on that one, Keon. Tell you what, I like the finish. Up and down. Oh, oh, when he took his game inside, this game turned around. Absolutely. Jones working on his man. Almost taken away. All going to be tied up, and they had to call a timeout here to... Greg Campy had to call a timeout to bail his guy out of a five-second call. Well, I've been sent out. I've got a better view of him. He's been calling timeout for about ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You've got a situation here where now all of a sudden it's keys on both ends. They both got to get stops. They both got to get good finishes on the offensive side. Can't say it enough. This is what college basketball is all about. Here's the replay on uh, the last bucket by Quino. And look at how he worked to get open. Bounced off that guy, bounced off that guy, and then inside. And this is what they call a flush. Tell you what, this kind of reminds me of the Lakers. You know, they've got Andrew Bynum, who's out right now with injury. But the Lakers have played better since they've been able to play through somebody in the middle. The game is best played from the inside out. Well, it, it, it also legitimizes your, the other guys you're doing and makes them more effective. Absolutely. Because you can't go backing down on some other guy. Absolutely. You don't have a guy in the middle. It's basically you're playing five on four. Jones gets a screen to use. Perkins goes right through it. Kangas to Cassisi. Cassisi launches a long bomb. It's front of the rim, no good. And Scott has the rebound. Got clobbered, but nothing called in the backcourt. Minute 53 to go. Dons could really use a good productive possession here. To Burroughs, to Perkins. Fakes the drive. Didn't have it. Carson really wants the ball. Here's Botts to Carson, to Perkins. Driving in, laying it up and in. Somebody cleared out a real nice move down the baseline for him. Great play by Perkins. He didn't stop, wasn't hesitant, just went all the way to the basket. He becomes the fourth down in double figures with 11 points. You said it would be key before the game. Yep, and it's good. And we have a whistle and a foul in the backcourt. Perkins made the steal, and Jones got the foul. Perkins is playing one heck of a ball game. And it'd be two in a row. And because every, he saved him in setting there. Yeah. And every time he does something good, he sticks that tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seem to remember some other guy doing that. Michael Look at that Jones. great pickpocket steal there. And then back inside, but well, that was a little ticky-tack foul. Let it go. In all honesty, yeah. He actually, they actually did Oakland a favor. But he can re they're making him earn it. 69-66. Perkins to the line. Two of two there. 11 points on the game. Double his average. Burroughs is near to double his average. Attaway. Got to have those. Well, you really don't want to put focuses on individual games. You know, it's more of a season, but the Dons can really use this individual game to get going. Well, this is, this is something that uh, would be so medicinal for this team to beat a good team. Second one is up. It is good. 
I mean, they have three wins, but they haven't been against the really good teams in the league. This would be beating a good team. Well, when you beat good teams, you stop and, you have, and good we team. haven't done it yet. Yeah. Minute 16 to go. Don's fans are on their feet. Jones gets it on a give and get from Nelson. He's going to go to work on Perkins. In the lane, CeCe will put it up. No good. Rebound up. No good. Rebound out of there by who else? Perkins. He Biggest, is doing it all. He's doing it all. Biggest rebound of the game. He's over the forecourt. Let's see if the is going to try and get on him. We're inside a minute. Chris has got to stay away from the back line. He almost got on the back line there and had a back and forth. Spots, keeping inside, throws it away. Oh, man, Bots has done that twice now, and they've both been killer plays. Here's Cassisi on the drive, puts it off the glass, no good. Rebound, Scott, and he's had about two or three of those big ones. Here's Perkins, and they follow him in the backcourt, and he's going to the line with 36 seconds to go. I'd almost rather Bot shot that ball than turn it over. <laughs> he had one. He never looked at the rim. Well, in all honesty, it all ended up okay. I guess, I guess it did. And you know what? If this is a score with the Dons with more at the end, Coach will say, don't do that again, and that will be the end of the discussion. See you next game. <laughs> to the line goes Perkins. 13 points, 4 of 4 from the line, 36.2 to go. Chris dips, delivers, and delivers it through. Six-point lead. It's not over, Dean, but I sense it. Am I, does that make me smart? I just... Well, it's a two-possession game, and he can make it a three-possession game here. Chris Perkins with 14 points. Number two. Oh, he's money. He has been money this entire game since he got in there. No foul. Here's Jones. Almost oh, tall strip run. Run around. Jones puts it up. No good. Offensive foul. And you know who forced that? I believe he's wearing number 22. Is he playing one heck of a basketball game? Don's ball with 30.7 to go. They lead it by seven. They haven't had a lead this big since the first eight points of the game. What a great second half. And if they can finish it, what a great win. I'll score Oakland 16 points this half. Well, and realized it was a 10-point deficit at one point. Get it into Perkins. Go ahead, foul him. Go ahead and foul him. Attaway, thank you very much. <laughs> he's been money from the strike. Well, and, and Greg Campy knows that's not the guy he wants to foul, but that's the guy who's going to have the ball. Perkins with 15 points, 6 of 6 from the line. Look at that, Keon. 20 of 23 for the Dons at the line today. And they're going to win. That's, that's where they're going to win the game. 20 to 4 at the free throw line. Yep. That's 16. Perkins. He says, just give me that ball and let me put it through. Like that. They just put up big numbers today. That was his 16th point, I believe, on tonight. Yep. And I'll tell you what, uh, who else has scored besides Burroughs over the, over the stretch? It's been those two guys. Yeah. And, and a couple of nice big threes from Scott. Number two, got it. 16 for Scott, 23 for Burroughs, 14 for Carson. Hey, that's a 17, good battle score. 17 for Perkins. This is good stuff. Cassisi leaning in, putting up a shot. Got it to go. It's a three-pointer. That got it to uh, a six-point game at 75-69 with 21.6 to go. 30-second 30, 30 timeout by Oakland. Well, I could have went without that shot. Yeah. But, uh, hey, they're not going to miss them all. And uh, look at what kind of shot he had to hit. So they really worked, in, and the defense was working there. Okay, a minute to thank today's game sponsor, 816 Pine Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne for five beats and drinks. 816 Pint and Slice. Which is, I'm sure, something the Dons would all like to enjoy, those who are of age. Yeah. In about 21.6 seconds. <laughs> Conference standings, uh, Don's close to going up to four and three as we're back into play right now. Perkins in the backcourt. They're going to follow him in the forecourt again. While they get up, why don't we pop that graphic back up again we can talk about it. With 14.5 to go, Perkins will go to the line. 
So we'll keep it here, I guess. And Perkins, 8 of 8 from the line. This is where the game has been basically salted away. And he misses. So Oral Roberts 6-0 right now, IUPUI 5-1. They're obviously the class of the league. If this holds on, the Dons will tie Oakland for third at 4-3. And, and then it trickles on down from there. Chris did not like missing that free throw. So he makes good for it. 76-69. Coach saying, let's give him some pressure, but not a whole heck of a lot. Cassisi into the forecourt. Boss is just going to let him have a bump away, throw up a shot, no good. Rebound out of there, Carson. Four seconds to go. He's fouled the backcourt. Well, if you rev Auerbach, the cigar is lit. Yeah. Champagne's been fun. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm glad these people came today because they have been rewarded for coming out in the cold today Absolutely. by a great performance by this team, especially from the midway point of the second half on. I'll tell you what, we're standing up now. Oakland hasn't sat down. But they're starting to sit down now because they know this is over. Not, they're putting on their coats, too. <laughs> Start the bus. Carson's first free throw. Back of the rim, no good. Oakland, long been in the double bonus. Forced to do that because they needed a foul to get the ball back. They, have, they played a good game. Yeah, they did. The Dons just came on and played the game they were capable of playing. Carson hits the free throw, puts him up to 16 points. Four. Three, and this ball game is going to belong to the Dons by a final of 77 to 69. Great classy move there. Jeff Tungate, the former IPFW assistant coach, gets a hug from Burroughs and gets a hug from more of his all of his former guys. It's kind of cool. What is cooler though is 77 IPFW, 69 Oakland. We'll be back. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The power's out. But you've planned ahead, and your food safety plan is on. You've stocked up on shelf-stable foods and a can opener in case you're in the dark for a while. You don't open the fridge, foods there will be safe for up to four hours if the door stays closed. You keep the freezer shut too, and you've kept it full. A full freezer will keep food frozen for about two days. A half full freezer, about one day. For longer outages, you move cold foods to an insulated cooler with plenty of ice or freezer gels and you use a thermometer to ensure foods remain no higher than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If the power returns quickly, you make sure freezer foods have ice crystals and check foods in the refrigerator with a food thermometer to make sure they're at 40 degrees or below. If not, or if there's any doubt, throw it out. To learn more, log on to AskKaren.gov or call the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Meat and Poultry Hotline at one mp hotline A message from USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. Get out to Pink Out, Saturday, February 2nd at Memorial Coliseum. Get out to Pink Out. Turn the Coliseum into a sea of pink and honor breast cancer survivors. Get out to Pink Out. Watch IPFW take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader battle of the boards. A dollar from every ticket benefits the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Mammography Unit. Get out to Pink Out. Wear pink and show your support. Get out to Pink Out, Saturday, February 2nd, because cancer doesn't play by the rules. People in blue and white filing out with smiling faces because they saw a great second half by the Dons. Winning today over Oakland 77-69, joined by assistant, head, assistant coach Dan Beret. Okay, down nine at the half. What did you tell them? And then what did you tell them again when they were down 11 in the second half? Well, the keys were they got 10 offensive rebounds in the first half, and they had probably 12 or 14 points in transition. I'm not sure the exact number, but those are the two keys. Those are things that we can control. Those are energy and effort mistakes, uh, and we wanted to keep them off the glass and quit getting them easy baskets, and that's what we focus on. And we continue to stress that uh, throughout the second half, defense and rebounding. If there is such a thing as a save in basketball, Chris Perkins now has two. 
Perk's been unbelievable. You know, we, we were sad when Michi went down, but I think Chris Perkins has really stepped up leading this team these last three games. Michi had a little situation where he was playing a lot outside in the first half, and you weren't very effective. When he moved back inside, and I said this to Keon during the broadcast, you guys were tougher. No question, no question. We like to start inside out, and we can get Dave and Keno touches down low. That really helps free up our shooters, and DeWitt Scott really got going today. He hasn't been too great from the three for us, but he really got going today. How important was this to get against a quality team? It was huge. I think, I'm not positive, but I think this gets us back to third place, four and three. Tied for third. Uh, going on the road to Western Illinois and IUPUI is going to be tough. Uh, you want to split on the road and win the home game, so hopefully we can do, go do that next week. I'm not going to be the one that keeps you out of that locker room. It's going to be fun. Dan, thanks very much. Okay, thanks, Dean. Dan Beret, IPFW assistant basketball coach. We'll be right back. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back in with the highlights of this uh, second half. Oakland got it going pretty good. Jones was in there, but then the Don started getting it going pretty good. B uh, Bots inside to Keno Burrows, who really came alive along with Perkins. And then the back, the kick outside as they just moved the ball, that they got into their offense, Keon, and that was the key. And there's another key, number three hitting threes. Well, I tell you, DeWitt put them up from everywhere today. You know, it wasn't that uh, they were doing things wrong, and they, you know, Waterstead hit some nice shots inside, but the Dons, when they got into their offense, Perkins keying the way, as is evidenced by plays like this, when he got two of his 18 points, and then Mr. Scott finding the man in low, and Carson, can't unplay what he did, too. He started to show his assertion, and the shots were falling. And I felt so bad for him ever since he's come into the lineup. Shots weren't falling for him. They, yeah, were, they were falling today. They were falling tonight, and, and, and what a good time for that to happen. And, you know, and, and it was, it's a team, in beating these guys, you were beating a team that knows how to do it and knows how to get it done. And down the road, you, down the way, you just finished him. And you made a good point. You think uh, the younger coach outcoached the old, younger, older I, coach I today. I really do. I think Coach Fife made some adjustments in the second half. I didn't see many adjustments on the side of Oakland. So hats off to uh, Coach Fife. Well, I, remember, I can vividly remember the one timeout he called when somebody was caught in no man's land there and there was about to be a turnover, and he called a timeout and saved them. Yeah. And uh, it was at that point that the Dons, I think, put the rally on that uh, actually got them to finish this thing and get it done. Another three from Scott. It is so good to see him find the range from deep out deep again. I tell you what, they talk about coaching being overrated, but when the players are playing hard. And then how about plays like oh, that? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Coaches can't do anything from yeah. about you, that from the sideline. You side can't line. do it like that. Don's finished with a 46.9% shot from the field, and that was done because in the second half, they hit 60.9 from the field. Wow. They were solid. 
Uh, three is seven to 15 back of the arc. Look at how they cut the rebound deficit. That was a double digit deficit at halftime. And the rebounds only four down at the end. Uh, the assists were there, which means the playmaking was going back. Look at the free throws, 24 to eight. He had 24 of 29 from the arc. Uh, what a turnaround. You I mean, up, down, and back up again. You made it key. You said it. And uh, I, I attribute your great basketball mind to that. When they <laughs> came Checks in the mail. to the free throw line, <laughs> that's, when, that's when things changed. And we talked about getting to the free throw line and how important it was. Well, and you don't get to the free throw line unless you push the issue. And you played the game, and you know what I'm talking about. The Dons pushed the issue offensively. They were very tentative, well, evidenced by Burroughs being on the perimeter for much of the first half. And that was one of those things where I thought that Coach, Fate, Coach, Coach Fife excuse me, had done that. Here are your point totals. Jones is with 17 to lead them. Kangas had 13. They really shut him down in the second half. I think he had all those 13 in the first half. Waterstat with 12. Burroughs with 23. Perkins with 18. 16 for Scott. It all added up to a win, Keon, and that's all that counts. Take them any way we can get them. And that's our story for today. The Dons, winners 77-69, going to 4-3 and three in the Summit League, tied for third right now. They head to IPU, IUPUI next, hopefully get a win there. For Keon, I'm Dean, and we appreciate your being here. Thanks for watching. Dons win.